Welcome to the program of Celebrate Your Moment with Joy. I'm your presenter, Pastor Florence Miner. I'm broadcasting live all the way from Minnesota, USA. And this is a production of One World Digital Media, which is situated in Seattle, Washington. That is the power of technology because somebody did not just let an opportunity pass. Opportunities come once in a lifetime and many people, they miss them. It's my prayer that you're not going to miss a golden opportunity that come because of ignorance. The title of my message will be, Be Focused to What God Has Called You to Do and Other Things Will Fall in Praise. Acts 1, no, Acts chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. Now, in those days, the, when the number of the disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenites because their windows were neglected in their daily distribution. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the word, the, the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, and seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Procarus, Nicona, Timon, Paminas, and Nicholas, a prostrate from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. Then the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. May God bless his word. Take over, Father, as I share your word. Use me as a vessel to be a blessing to your people, and as you bless them, do not pass me by. I pray that I may decrease as you increase in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We see that the number of the disciples continue to multiply as the word of God continue to be spread. That was a good thing. And as much as it was a good thing, there were other responsibilities that seemed like they were being forsaken. I don't like the word used neglect. It was not, not neglect because it was a blessing that came, only that there were increase of responsibility. But one thing I like about what they did is they decided they, we cannot live to, uh, to them to minister the word of God, to serve tables. We have to do something. They realized that they needed to do something. My brother, my sister, when you see that responsibilities are increasing, it is not the time to be distracted. It is the time to be focused, but you do something. They did something that was good. They suggested, why don't we choose men among us full of good reputation, full of wisdom and the Holy Spirit so that they can be in charge of the widows and their distribution of their needs. And we continue with the ministry of the word. The minister of the word must continue continue irrespective. My brother, my sister, whether you are CEO, a, a CEO of a company, your responsibility as a man in your house must stay, must not be uh, distracted. My brother, my sister, I know this too well and especially when we minister as women, there are so many responsibilities that come and it is very easy to get distracted from what God has called you to. May God help us not to be victim of that. You have to assign something to somebody. And even when, when they are arrested, God can bring help from outside, but stick to your call. How about as a student, as a student, maybe you decide I'm going to have a job. You have to balance both of them, but be careful not to be distracted. You have to know, what am I going to do? There are times that you have to reduce your hours of working. How about as a young couple, you have gotten married, you are calling one another sweet honey because you are the only two. Then later on, God blesses you with children. You get distracted from the focus. You have to know what is the main focus. One of the things I like here is that the, 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 the disciples' purpose, we cannot live to minister the word of God and serve tables. What are those tables that have distracted you from your call? God calls you knowing that there is well a way out for you. If he calls you as a man, he knows that you are well able, even with your responsibility as a father, as a responsibility as a priesthood in the house. How about as a mother? I know it. I am a mother. I am a woman. I am a grandmother. I am an employee. It is not easy, but you have to let go. I thank God for people God brings into my life. Sometimes I have to let go and let them know, take the read. God help us. And it is my prayer that God will help 
will bring people of integrity, people full of wisdom, people full of faith, people full of the Spirit of God who can continue with you in the call that God has given you. As a man know, you still remain a husband, you still remain a father, even if you are a CEO. As a, as a woman know that you still remain as a woman, as a mother, as a grandmother. Sometimes I am with my grandson and when I'm just about to do something, he comes, he wants us to pray sick and hide, he'll go running to the cross and I get distracted. But I have to remain focused. I am a grandmother, yes, but I have to keep myself focused. I tell him, we have to slow down. Come and we go. And he like to go where I record and say, this is you, grandma. So my brother, my sister, what am I saying? There is a lot that happens into our life, but we have to be focused on what God has called us to do. You have to know what is your call. What are you doing? Do not leave it out because you are accountable. God has appointed you knowing that it is well. You are well able to do it. Uh, and I want to thank God that what they decided, the disciples decided, the verse 5 says, And the same priest, the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and they of the Holy Spirit, and among others. I serve in the Stephen ministry, so I tend to think, even though I'm not very sure, this, that, that ministry must have originated from this book, from this chapter of, uh, of, of Acts chapter 6. And my brother and my sister, what you will decide to do, it will praise those who are, you are serving with. If it's in your family, read very praying. This is what I've been called to do. I can't leave it. I have to do what God has called me to do. Is it going to be taken so well? No. There is always be a company, but you have to be purpose. You have to be focused. Yeah, when you continue to increase, when you are made a CEO, there are so many responsibilities. You have to be out there for meetings, and there will be a complaint. Yeah, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by Hellenists because their widows were neglected and in their daily distribution. When there is a complaint because responsibility has increased, it is time for you, man and woman of God, to do something. It is time for you, man and or woman of God, to do and, and bring in a discussion on the table and say, this is how things are going. We have to do this. Otherwise, you are going to be accountable. When you go at the judgment seat of God, what God has assigned you to do is what he'll request from you. You don't want to be called like that foolish servant who, was, who said, I only had one, so I did not do da, 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 da. Those reasons that don't even hold water. And he was called a fool. Bring it. It was snatched from him and given to the one who had worked well. Oh God, help me that I may not be called a fool. I want to be that uh, faithful servant who is going to double what God has be, uh, put in my life. It is my prayer that you are going to be the same. But is it going to happen automatically? No. You have to do something. You have to realize there is a problem because of the increase, because of the blessings. We are not going to follow the blessing and leave the blesser, the one who has blessed us. We are not going to leave the call that God has bestowed upon us, has assigned us, so that we can live what is surrounding us. But we have to, we can't be ignorant. We have to do something. We have to realize and take action. When you take action, this, the action and the sing and the discussion will praise those God has put in your life unless they are closing their ears. If they close their ears and their eyes, that they cannot, they can see, but they cannot agree to it, it is okay. You have done your part. The last one remained to those people who hear us. But one of the things I like, it is this. I like this verse. Verse 4. Ah, but we will give. Let me start from us. Uh, verse 3. It is not desirable that we should live. I started from, from the verse 2. It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. It is not desirable that you get off from what God has assigned you to do. But do something. Don't just continue and don't do something. Do something and the Lord will see that you are taking a step and he will bring people who will understand. He will make your family understand. He will make the people you serve with understand. He will make the people that you train understand. As a student, put your priorities right. If you are going to reduce your hours for the sake of education, do it. Couple, when my children come, if it means that you are going to reduce your visits and going out, reduce it because all what you've been called for, you need to be focused in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that you continue to water this word that it may be a blessing to that person who was under the sound of my voice in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You are there.
You know God has called you. You've been distracted by many things, serving tables, and you've been saying, until this happened, until this happened. Yet God has called you a long time ago. He has given you all the tools. It is time that you say, I give it all. I surrender all. I come to you. You want to come back to the ministry. I want to pray this precious prayer with you. Do you want to say after me, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I repent of the many times I've neglected what you called me for to, because of serving tables. Help me, oh God, to take an action, oh God, and I know you bring people in my life who will understand and help me continue to do what you have called me to do in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The other prayer I want to pray, it is for those people who have not accepted the Lord. You have heard the word from day one to all these years, from the time you were a small child, and you have always waited and waited. It is not your time. Time leads when Jesus said, all is finished. I want you to say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come before you. I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Write my name in the book of life and give me a desire to grow spiritually in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Salvation is as simple as that. You have become a new creature. Now start walking in the newness of life. I want to advise you. Look for a church nearby where you live that you can call a home church where you will be equipped, where you will go spiritually and you will be able to be a blessing to other people in Jesus' name. Lord God bless you. I love you and God loves you the most. I want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel if you have not done so. If you have done so, God bless you and continue praying for this ministry. We need you than ever before. If God put a burden in your heart to serve, to serve in this ministry, come on board. We need a lot of people, especially in the technical issues in Jesus' name. Most of us do these things by faith. So don't say you cannot save, you cannot serve because you don't know and you don't know. Come as a person who don't know, but you are coming by faith in Jesus' name. And you'll be surprised what you know you did not know that you know. Have a blessed day. Don't be distracted from your call.